Uh, tonight I want to talk about um, my work as an artist. Uh, my practice revolves primarily around the medium of sound. And over the past 10 years, my work in Dublin and abroad has focused mainly on considering sound in relation uh, in the urban context, designing and prototyping sound installations situated in public space, and developing a discourse around how these works might be integrated into architectural and urban design strategies. In 2011, I submitted a proposal to the Strand 2 Interaction with the City Public Art Program launched by Dublin City Council, and I proposed to create an artwork based around spending one year working as the Dublin City Acoustic Planner and Urban Sound Designer. Um, and I'd be working both within the City Council with links to planning in the City Architects and also sort of independently as an independent artist. Um, the proposal was successful and this month I'm beginning the commission working with Rory O'Keefe in the City Arts Office and interfacing with different people in the Council. So today I just wanted to talk about the initial phase of the year-long commission and I want to try to bring up this kind of preliminary question of what is an urban acoustic planner or what is an urban sound designer. And I'm going to approach these questions by considering uh, this quote from the American urban planner Kevin Lynch's book, The Image of the City, which was originally published in 1960. Um, and basically, this is the first paragraph of the book, or of the preface even. And he says, um, this book is about the look of cities and whether this look is of any importance and whether it can be changed. The urban landscape, among its many roles, is also something to be seen, to be remembered, and to delight in. Giving visual form to the city is a special kind of design problem, and a rather new one at that. And now I'm just going to modify that for my project a little bit, and I'm going to say this project is about the sound of cities, and whether this sound is of any importance, and whether it can be changed. The urban landscape, among its many roles, is something to be heard, to be remembered and to delight in. Giving acoustic form to the city is a special kind of design problem and a rather new one at that. Um, so I want to discuss this design problem in, by briefly considering it in relation to four different contexts. Uh, first in the context of the original project proposal, then because I'm an artist and I get obsessed with this kind of stuff, I want to talk about it as a more concise artwork in relation to the idea of the post-medium condition. Then I want to talk about it in relation to contemporary Dublin. And finally, I want to talk about it in a more global context, moving away from noise mitigation, noise control strategies, and towards what some people refer to as sensorial urbanism. So to begin with the proposal, my proposal is very open. Um, and it, it lists a series of activities that will be carried out within the commission. And these activities include, amongst other things, uh, documenting different parts of the city through field recording prototyping and implementing sound installations in the public domain, and planning events and interventions that highlight listening within the urban context, extending existing noise maps with qualitative soundscape analysis and documentation, reviewing and cataloging existing noise mitigation strategies, seeking active projects in DCC and funding, uh, focusing the commission's efforts with uh, other active developments. And finally, I want to combine the output from all of these activities to produce maybe a kind of informal draft Dublin City acoustic plan. Um, the project prioritizes uh, an active layer of documentation via a forthcoming website and mobile application that I'll be working on soon. Uh, and those will serve as a portal through which the project will function. Uh, from the outset, the project evolves through collaboration by inviting both local and international stakeholders to take part in informal discussions that will be published to the website as text fragments that support the project's main thematics and feedback into the development of this kind of Dublin city acoustic plan. Um, so now I'm going to go on to talking about the project as an artwork, and I want to talk a little bit about the artwork and the audience that I envision for it. So outside of the logistics that dictate how the project function, functions within the city council, it's important for me to articulate how it, how it is intended to function as an artwork. Now, the artwork's primary audience could be easily identified as the larger public who experience the project's outcome in public space or via the project's um, kind of documentation, website, mobile application. But I also want to draw attention to the possibility of understanding the people with whom I interact and collaborate to achieve the project's output as a kind of active participant audience. Um, and on this internal level, it's not meant to be read as a performance or as a form of institutional critique, but it's more a, an opportunity for exchange. and, and the artwork, is, to me, is cited in this immaterial framework. Um, I don't know if anybody here has been down to see um, Tino Segal's new project called The Situation at Emma, which just opened last week, but 
there was a talk last Saturday and they were talking a little bit about this term, the post-medium condition, which is defined by the uh, art critic Rosalind Krauss, talking about his work down there. And I would kind of maybe position my work within the same framework and I'm combining media and structures from conceptual art, sound installation, but I'm also adapting um, various architectural and urbanist discourses to, to meet my agenda. Um, so now let's move on, let's talk about Dublin. Uh, introducing urban sound design and uh, urban acoustic planning practices on the level of a city council is relevant, I think, on a international, in an international context because this has only been explored to date on a kind of project-based level or on a research level, on an academic level. Um, and I think Dublin is a great place to start with this. Dublin is a concise environment within which to experiment with this kind of project and, you know, right now we're undergoing this shift in perspective, and I think this is towards a certain indeterminacy regarding the form and the character of the city. I think that's come up a little bit tonight with people talking about things, um, following the building boom and following the subsequent economic shifts that we've been experiencing. Um, so just to kind of highlight that and to, to place the work a little bit, um, in the editorial of the OASE Journal for Architecture's 85th issue, which is entitled Product, Productive Uncertainty, Indeterminacy in Spatial Design, Planning and Management, the authors are talking about um, this need for the anticipation of uncertainty through the search, uh, sorry, the anticipation of uncertainty through the search for structures that can accommodate future changes, and the idea of uncertainty as a productive factor in the experience and design of the spatial environment. Um, and these statements about indeterminacy, I think, uh, provide the ideal conditions within which to experiment with working with urban sound design because urban uh, acoustic structures, f as, as a form, they favor and they indeed function through indeterminacy and mutability, and they kind of serve as a contrast to fixed architectonic forms that dominate the urban environment. Um, on another note, I just want to say this project um, I, I really do want to address specific goals that are documented in uh, the Dublin City Public Realm Strategy and the Dublin City Development Plan um, because I think exporting sound design techniques into the realm of urban design prov provides the designer with a new set of tools for addressing urban experience and placemaking. Um, let's move, let's beyond, move beyond the local context. Um, this project complements longer term European Union strategies such as the 2002 European Environmental Noise Directive that addressed noise in the context of the built environment. Now that 2002 noise directive um, sought to address urban noise by monitoring the environmental problem, informing and consulting the public, uh, addressing local noise issues and developing a long-term EU strategy. Now my project uh, is trying to extend this and to complement it with a series of steps that might form a more positive approach to the urban sound environment. Um, and so I, I would say that maybe just as something to look forward to, and, and from my perspective, several well-placed sound installations within a greater urban region could be seen to introduce the public as well as design professionals to the idea that sound might be utilized in a positive way as part of the design-built environment. So a possible approach to developing a regional acoustic planning strategy might be choosing a focus region within Dublin, identifying different oral typographies that are compatible with the region's soundscape, classifying different sections of the region according to these typologies, looking for relevant sites for interventions, and then prototyping these kind of interventions and installations, and then finally, hopefully, actually realizing uh, interventions and installations in the public domain. Um, at the end of work like this, uh, the, the results would be analyzed in relation to other planning strategies in the given region and hopefully feed back into active discussions about longer term sound design strategies. And that would encourage maybe a productive means of researching this idea of sensorial urbanism as a set of practices that directly incorporate considerations of multi-sensory urban experience within urban design. That's, that's kind of where I'm pushing with this. Now quickly to conclude, um, I just wanted to talk about kind of the first project sketch that I'm working on right now, which is um, something, uh, it's uh, something I'm developing in, um, in conjunction with the Lighthouse Cinema down in Smithfield. Uh, they've kind of endorsed the, just the first phase of the development. Um, the project is based on creating a transitional space. There we go, there's Smithfield and Lighthouse Cinema picture. Um, the project is based on creating a transitional space that links the interior activity of the cinema with the open exterior dynamics of the public square, Smithfield Plaza. And I kind of chose to target this area because I know it's kind of active right now in Dublin City Council in terms of being a, a potential area that might house different activities and functions. 
Um, the project is based around installing a network of small computers that would bring melodic content from fills out into the public space and map them onto the sounds that are already happening there. And it, so it would kind of tie the, um, you know, the kind of activity of the cinema with, with the activity of the public space. Um, and th the idea is that a, um, a prototype like this, even if it doesn't get built, it just provides me with the ground to discuss you know, the kind of first steps of planning these kind of things and actually building things in public space. So then just to, to really conclude, um, I'm really excited about this project. And anybody who's interested, please be in touch. I'm going to leave my email there. And I mean, this is a really, it's a very open concept right now. I'm really open to collaboration. So, you know, please get in touch if you have any questions or anything. So thanks.